Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made these super, super awesome Lysianthus out of paint. I love Lysianthus. I used to work on a farm, a flower farm, and it was one of my favorite jobs ever. And one of my favorite flowers there were Lysianthus. And I felt inspired to make them. So, I decided to start off by mixing some clear Gaffrey art material medium, a little bit of chartreuse from Gaffrey art materials, which is a heavy textured paint. And then I also used just a little bit of the phthalo green that you just saw, and that's a medium texture. Um, so that doesn't, um, that doesn't have that super stiff texture that I use when I'm creating structure, but it's wonderful for adding pigment to already uh, thick paint. So I'm just mixing this all together. And like I always say with the clear medium, when you're using it, it tends, when it's wet, it lightens your colors and it makes it almost look like a white, but when it dries, it goes clear. So what I like to do usually is, unless I'm very familiar with how these colors are going to turn out, um, I usually like to just mix my pigments together first, and then once I'm happy with the shade, I add the clear texture. So I didn't do that for this one. As you saw, I just mixed them all together um, and it worked out fine. So here I'm just going to be cutting up some of my parchment paper that I will be piping onto. I like to buy these sheets that are, I think they're 12 by 14 or 12 by 18. They're made for baking and they work really well. And um, then I just cut them into strips and that's super easy. So here I'm going to go in with a... Mm, it's a number 846, and it's like a closed star, I think is what it's called. Closed star tip. And my plan was that I'm going to pipe these centers, and then I'm going to pipe around them um, to create my Lysianthus. So you can see that in a minute. So then I put my tip in the bag. I made sure I cut it the right, um, the right amount. And then I just add the paint. This is pretty fun. I like working with this paint. It's very relaxing. It's very fun. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy watching me mix paint because I like to always leave that in real time. Um, it just looks so pretty. It's so relaxing. All right. And then I always, once I put the paint in the bag, I just give it a little shake. And what that does is it lets all the air bubbles kind of escape upward um, so that you can have a smoother piping experience. So I like to use a canvas that's still covered in the plastic from being new um, as my little sheet that holds my paint. So that's just what you see underneath this. And then I'm piping onto the parchment paper now and just leaving these little dots. And I don't remember how many I made, but I made quite a few of them. So I just sped it up so that we can yeah, not spend so much time on this because it's a pretty basic thing. And what this is, this tray that I'm using is a wood panel from Gaffrey Art Materials, which you can see right there in the name. Um, and then here I'm just using my extra paint and putting it in a piping bag by itself 
just to preserve it until I need it for whatever my next uh, step is going to be. Because sometimes I just mix way too much paint. Honestly, you'd think I'd get better at it, but I really just don't. I still, <laughs> I still mix way too much. So for this step, we're going to use parchment paper squares. We're going to use um, a tip 104 and a parchment, I just said that, a uh, piping bag. And then this is the Gaffrey Art Materials in titanium white. And then this is the chartreuse that I just started using. This is my very first bag that I've been using. I love it so much. I'm going to have to buy it again. I just want to use it in every painting ever because it's such a great natural green. You know, sometimes when I use green, I tend to make it much too cool of a color like phthalo green and viridian are beautiful green colors, but they're not very natural looking because most greens in nature are very warm. And the chartreuse is very warm and it allows me to have a lot more range than I did before and I enjoy that a lot. So what I'm doing and unfortunately I don't know why but my camera is angled bad and I'm really sorry about that but you can see like along the bottom there of my piping bag that I've just added a strip of the chartreuse because I want that to be like the inside of my petals. You'll see that when I start piping. I've talked about this a couple times. So if you've watched my other videos, you're familiar. I like to do this technique quite a bit. And it just means I get more variation of color, which I really, really like. And, you know, Lysianthus have this really cool um, kind of greenish inside um, center of the flower but it kind of leaks out into the petals and it's really nice and then I'm just putting white for the rest of it and then I think I gave it yeah see I'm squishing it around a little bit and that's really just to blur that sharp line between the chartreuse and the white I hope that makes sense it's just like giving it a little blur um, so it just looks a little nicer, a little more natural. And I really like to use these. I think they're called plate scrapers or something. I bought them from Amazon a couple years ago and I use them a bunch. So they're super cheap. They're super easy to use and uh, I recommend them. Uh, they work really well. Like you saw um, when I was doing the white paint, to really get all of the paint out of the far end of the bag so you can really make the most of your tube. All right, so now I'm just going to get started and I'm going to start piping. Now, sometimes I really like to leave the centers and let them dry before I start piping around them because they're a lot more stable, but I wasn't exactly patient enough. So I just started directly piping onto the bases, as you can see right here. And it was really fun. It looks pretty good, especially on camera. Um, I felt like when I was doing them that uh, they didn't look very neat, which was kind of disappointing because in my head I thought it was going to work out a little bit better. But, you know, sometimes you're doing stuff, and if you're like me and you're always trying new stuff... <laughs> <laughs> you um you deal with this a lot and um I just decided to keep going and see if I could make it look a little bit nicer I'm so annoyed that my camera is not angled correctly I think I didn't have it up high enough 
so annoying. But you know what? This is what I have. Um, so I'm just going to show this for now because you can still see a little bit of it. But I was really going for that kind of irregular, kind of mm, very ruffly flower. You know, like some of the petals are open further than others. And I just, I think that looks really natural and I really wanted to get that look. So that's kind of what I was going for here. That was the vibe. And as you can see, I have a very nice um, paper towel right here underneath my piping area. And that's so I can clean off the tip. Uh, sometimes the tip gets a little messy when it gets dragged through that other green from the middle. And um, it just works so much better when you keep things clean. You see how beautiful that chartreuse is at the bottom of each petal. Man, I just love it so much. It's such an, a wonderful color mount. So I sped things up a little bit because I make quite a few of these flowers. So, you know. Oh yeah, and here I went ahead and I added more white because I realized I did not have nearly enough paint to keep going and make all the flowers I wanted to make. So the Lysianthus colors that I chose were a white with a chartreuse center and then um, a white and purple blend because those were some of my favorites. Um, and I've actually made them before, way back before I started my YouTube channel. So I think I'll, I'll make them again because they're very easy to make and they're so beautiful. They're really, really just lovely flowers. I cannot wait to grow them again one day. Y'all, one day I am going to have a farm and it's going to be amazing and I'm going to grow all the kinds of flowers and I just look really forward to that because where I live now, like I've said before, I only have a balcony and I only get a few pots, which I'm very happy for, but I love to have fields of flowers. That's just the dream. And I love walking barefoot in the lawn and in, in my own grass. And here that's not really possible because we've got a street. Well, we've got a paved courtyard and we've got a street and then we've got rocks and then we've got the beach, which is, or not the beach, it's water coming up to the rocks. But as a country girl, I really like grass a whole bunch. So I'm very excited to get a farm one day. And unfortunately, I keep, <clears throat> I keep being not in the frame. And so this is my very first flower when I, that I made that I realized, wait a minute. I don't like a single damn one that I've already done that has the piping in the middle, which is so annoying because, you know, I could have just started making them the right way. But, you know, I didn't know and now I do know. So that's just how it goes sometimes. And I decided to speed it up, I think, in a second or so um, because I was really annoyed that it wasn't even showing up on camera. And you can see it when I get to the purple ones, you can see a lot better uh, how I pipe them. But it's basically the same way that I was piping the other ones. It's just because I don't have the middles already piped, I can get a lot uh, closer of a spiral, if that makes sense. And I really wanted to do some that were really open and then some that were partially open and then some that were all the way closed, like buds and stuff. Um, I really enjoyed how this painting worked out because I think it's one of the paintings that I've done the most, that I've done that has the most um, variety of shapes of flowers that are all supposed to be the same type of flower. 
So this one was really exciting for me and I really enjoyed that. Um, and I look forward to doing it again because, man, I just love to have a good time, you know? Your own YouTube channel. You can literally just do whatever you want and you don't have to be super serious, like at a job, you know, where they got rules about professionalism and stuff like that. And I appreciate that. And I want my YouTube channel to grow so that I can keep making awesome content like this and hopefully way better than this in the future with everything being in frame. Ugh. And stuff like that. I'm hoping I can get a camera soon. That would be really cool. And that I could get much better footage. Uh, but in the meantime, my phone works, you know, well enough for my skill level. And, uh, you know, I'm just making do in the meantime. But I really want to take this channel seriously and, you know, have a bunch of videos and awesome stuff like that. And I've got plans, y'all. I've got a couple of things written up already. I'm working on this video and another video. I have a formula that I want to share with you guys coming up in the next video, which is super exciting. Um, what else? Ah, I have so many things I'm working on right now. You know what? I started writing a book and I'm really excited about it because I wrote the outline all in one quick blurb, if you will. And um, after I did that, I, you know, I kind of, I came up with the title, I came up with each of the chapters, and then I went in and I started filling up out an outline for each chapter and it just flowed easily right out of my my brain um and it was wonderful and it's so exciting and i've already written a bunch of content for the first three chapters and it's so much fun i'm having the greatest time so i'm having fun i'm editing videos which is awesome i'm writing my book which is awesome i have oh my gosh I've been wanting to sew for a long time and I want to sew with intention and I, I set a long list of goals that I have that I want to achieve in a year and I want to sew a lot of clothes for my wardrobe so that I can have more of a dream wardrobe and I took my fabrics that I have and I took um, samples off of each one and I sketched ideas for each fabric and what I want to create out of it and now I have a binder full of uh, sewing plans and I've already made four garments I think the last two weeks I've been sewing a lot so I think I made two garments a week um, but I did mostly just sew so I didn't really get much else done um, and then I started my book this past week and I haven't gotten much else done from that because also we traveled over the weekend to Croatia which was very very beautiful by the way we visited Split it was amazing and the weather was beautiful and we had a really nice Airbnb it was awesome so awesome and then I came home I volunteered at the thrift store um, because I like to volunteer at the thrift store that we have uh, for the military people here. And uh, then I also get to go to the gym. And I really love to go to the gym. So that's what I've got going on. I've got a lot going on. So I actually started creating schedules for my day uh, so that I can really stick to things and also live in the now because I like that, you know. Um, so I just basically show up, I do whatever my schedule says, I'm on track, and I really get to experience every single moment. And it's like slow living, but it's living with intention, so I'm still going to reach my goals. And, you know, I, I'm just really, I'm really hyped up about it, man. <laughs> I'm seriously so excited about everything. So 
I hope you guys love my videos. I love to read your comments. I just, I, I, I feel like I have a, a small community growing and it's just so much fun. I love chatting with you guys in the comments and I love answering your questions and, um, yeah, I'm just so excited to grow this channel. So if you like this content or you um, want to share it with other people, please like it, comment, subscribe, share it with other people <sighs> because I love doing this. I really do. When I first started this channel, it was really hard and it felt like a job. And as I've gotten more accustomed to doing everything, y'all, Oh, it feels so easy now. It feels so fun. And I'm just so happy that I've gotten to the point where it's really effortless, to be honest, because it was effortful in the beginning. <laughs> so you can see a lot better how I'm making these now. And actually, I also, if you guys uh, have seen my last videos, I said something along the lines of after I make about four or five flowers of the same kind, I get really bored and I start branching out and making other ones. So I also made a few garden roses out of this paint here and they're really pretty. I really like the structure of them. I don't so much love the color of them. I don't know. It's probably the gardener in me who uh, knows that purple roses aren't really Mm, purple roses are different you know they don't come in the shade that I created here and so I'm just kind of annoyed and I don't really want to use them so they're sitting in my uh it, you know in my space where I keep them um just kind of waiting for me to come up with a good idea of how to use them because they're really pretty I just don't feel inspired yet but I'm sure it'll come to me um, yeah, I was thinking, oh man, did I forget to tell you guys that I was using a 104 tip? I think I told you guys, but in case I didn't, I'm using a 104 tip. Yeah, there you can see the roses. And of course, I always like to make a few buds and things like that because they're just nice. And I'm off camera again because I don't always know what I am doing. <sighs> but that's all right. It happens. Oh yeah, so now we're going to do the background. And I'm using a 10 by 10 canvas because I accidentally bought 10 by 10 canvases. I actually really prefer 12 by 12s. And for some reason I wasn't thinking when I bought these. So now I have to use them and I don't like to use them. They're too small. I like to do things big. <laughs> I got problems, man. I have big ideas. I got big dreams. I got, you know, I got big goals, all kinds of stuff, you know, I just do things big and you know what you get when you do things big, you also get big anxiety, you get big depression sometimes and that just sucks. So when you're like me, you got to learn to go with the flow and figure out processes that work for yourself because dude, life can feel a little rough sometimes and other times it can feel super awesome that's why i'm so excited that i'm writing my book because it's called cultivating peace and i feel like i've done a really good job of cultivating peace for myself and i am so excited to share it with you guys because i think it's a perfect how-to book and i have read so many self-help books, self-help, uh, motivational content, 
um, anything of that nature, you know, like biographies and things like that. I love books like that. And, oh my gosh, I love the Abraham Hicks books. Dude, those are wonderful too. And, uh, you know, I just really like books that are so helpful, that give you processes. And this book is all about processes. And then I also share some personal experiences for how, you know, how this came to me, how, you know, my life is changing because of my implementation of the new processes. And I just think that if anyone is stressed or anxious or just in general sad, you know, um, I think this is the kind of book that would really be a, a good balancer, you know, because I used to kind of oscillate between um, being very sad and just feeling like everything is difficult, everything is overwhelming, and, you know, why can't things just be easy? But then also if things are easy, sometimes I get bored. So it's really it's really been a practice of finding that sweet spot of, okay, this is peace. We like peace. Okay, now that we're stable, we can make much better choices, you know, that don't feel so overwhelming. For example, like creating a schedule so that I can be more present in the moment when I create things. And I mean, it just, it's such a game changer. I can't even, I can't even fully put it in words right now, like describe it because it just feels so massive and so exciting. And it feels like I'm doing a really good thing for myself. And I like that, you know, I feel like I'm being a very good steward for myself. <laughs> And I love to be productive, right? But I don't want to be productive to the point where it makes me anxious that I'm not being productive enough when I have days where I feel tired. So, for example, in my um, schedule, I decided to give myself four hours of free space every day. And that's basically to give myself creative freedom or if I'm having a tired day, I can just take a nap and chill out and watch TV. Or, you know, I can be extremely, you know, passionately creative in my zone and just, you know, do whatever comes through my mind. And some days I want to be super high product productivity and some days I just want to enjoy life. And, um, it's a really nice equalizer for my life, I think, to have that free space in between my other space. So like a few hours for working in the morning on things that are meaningful for me uh, that are going to be for my goals to accomplish them and things like that. And uh, of course, meals are super important, right? Because if you don't eat and sleep, I mean, what chance do you have really for feeling stable and grounded and stuff. So that's really important. That's a non-negotiable for me. I just decided, you know what? I cannot, I cannot negotiate this with myself. This is pointless. And, uh, yeah, it, it's just nice. And it takes the guesswork out of, you know, what I'm going to do. So I like that. And I feel very proud of myself for figuring it out. And I like how it feels. So that's pretty cool. So here I'm creating my background. <laughs> Back to the painting. <laughs> so here I'm using some phthalo green and I'm just going to use my palette knife and some phthalo green. I'm just going to like put it on the back of the knife and then I'm going to glide it across. That one got a little too much green. So that one's more of what I was going for. I'm just swiping it out. Yeah, gorgeous. I love this. 
I love making the backgrounds. They're so much fun. And you probably saw, or unless I was being too distracting with all my storytelling, um, I just used the paint in the piping bag and I snipped the tip off in a very fine uh, point. Um, and that's just how I make the twigs, greenery, what, what have you. Uh, I don't actually use a tip for those all the time. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I use a small round one, but in this case I did it. When I have extra paint in my bag when I finish the greenery, I like to um, pipe out, I guess you could say, high spots uh, in the painting because I want my flowers to have more, um, more height from the middle of the canvas. And then when it dries, it's a very sturdy structure for me to set my flowers on when I go um, in with a wet paint after. So then when I go in with the, um, with my background flower, now I look this up because the tip I have isn't actually marked and it's from Gaffrey Art Materials website and I think it's called a Russian star flower. So you can go look that up. Uh, the URL should be in my link tree, which is beneath this video um, in the description. So what I ended up doing is I used white on the outside of the edges and then I put chartreuse in the center. And then this is just basically the, the bed of wet paint that all my dry flowers will be laid into. That sounded fun. <laughs> the bed of wet paint. <laughs> I always love this stage. You know, it is so much fun. I don't know though, man. I feel like I just love every every stage of it. Well, no, I don't. Okay, the part I hate is the waiting. Man, I am not a patient person. You know, that is a virtue. I uh, um, it it just passed me by. It, it is not something uh, I have practiced too much. Um, nor do I want to because. I want things, I want them now, I want to make them now, I just want to build it now, you know. <laughs> um. And there's the sheet of beautiful dried flowers that I ever so patiently, apparently, Nah, I just distracted myself for a few days with other stuff. Uh, let them dry completely. You know, sometimes I don't let them dry completely. I just let them dry most of the way. And then I start placing them on. But I let these dry all the way. I don't know why. I don't remember what I was doing. Maybe I went on a trip. It always gets easier when I do like that. <laughs> and then I just start placing them in one by one. And I think I sped it up here because I watched it and I was like, man, this is kind of slow. Um, and basically I just do around the outside first and kind of alternating colors just to kind of keep things interesting. Um, and then sometimes I put them next to each other just to, I don't want it to look too uniform. That's been the main thing about this particular artwork 
is that I have not embraced any uniformity really at all. So this one's my favorite, the open one. I don't know why, but it is just so gorgeous to me. And you know, you can just pick them up and move them around if you're very careful with it. And you make sure you, you know, cover the smushed uh, paint flowers underneath with a bigger flower on top, which is what I just did there, um, which is pretty cool. Oh yeah, and, um, this one had a little bit of extra paint sticking off the side that I didn't want, so I just trimmed it off with a pair of scissors. And of course my buds, can't forget those. It's just so pretty. I want to make another one right now. <sighs> I love it. You know what else I look forward to doing when I move back to the States? I look forward to going to like a, a farmer's market or an art show or whatever, you know, on the weekend and set up my art and sell it face to face to people. <sighs> I'm so excited to do that because I'm not allowed to do that while I'm living here in Italy. And that is annoying because <sighs> I could, there's this thing called a SOFA agreement and um, it has just been updated and we are now technically the military, sorry, military spouses and civilian spouses, which is me, um, are now allowed to work for any American company as a telework uh, position. We're not allowed to work in the EU um, at least not with my specific visa. So I'm not even allowed to just sell it to Americans, which really, it's really annoying when you love your art that you make. Other people love the art that you make, but you're kind of forced to stay small. It just feels mean. Oh, so this tip that I'm showing you here is a number 13. So I just really look forward to being able to sell my artworks and, you know, have a farm and all the things that I just, that are so different from my life here, you know. Right now we live here, I travel, I full time uh, paint, so uh, work on my goals, work on my YouTube channel, all that stuff, cook, whatever I like, take as many naps as I like, which is really, really fun because um, I have done so many jobs since I've been, I don't know, probably, I think I was 13 when I got my first job and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't hard or anything, but you know, I've basically been an energetic person my whole life, which has <laughs> made me the perfect candidate to want jobs because then I can exchange my energy for money. But it has been really nice to live a very chill, relaxed life. Not going to lie in the beginning, it was really difficult for me to actually learn how to relax because I really was just in the mood to get my art business off the ground and running. And I just had to learn to be okay with not doing that while I'm here right now. Um, so this is kind of my way of making this an art business, uh, is by doing it on YouTube. Um, so I can still share my passion, uh, without having, uh, you know, issues with taxes and stuff like that. So 
you know, that's my weird predicament. Because <laughs> I would really love to sell my artworks all the time. I'd love to have an up and running website that is just easy to use and ship out paintings every week. Oh my God, that would be the dream. But, you know, see, there's that patience that I am not so fond of, that I have to practice, actually, because it's just how it is right now. So I really wanted to make these little spiral bud shapes because that's one of the things about Lysianthus that just stands out to me so much, but they were such a pain in the butt to put in. Ugh annoying as hell dude so i don't know if i'm gonna do those again if i do i'm going to do them differently i don't know how yet but i'm not gonna do this tweezer baloney again that's annoying but they did look really pretty in the end and um I don't know. Maybe I'll convince myself it's a good idea to redo them. <laughs> I don't know. See, I didn't used to do really long, uh, laborious kind of artworks, and now I really enjoy them. Uh, same thing with sewing. I used to not want to do really uh, intricate works and I've made a bunch of dresses that are just very very they were very time consuming they really stretched my skill set um, and just basically took a lot of effort and I don't know why but I guess I just love I love like just the right amount of challenge you know I don't want it to be overwhelming but I also don't want it to be not interesting enough uh, yeah so I, I I'm always learning stuff because I just like that little bit of challenge I guess although don't talk to me if it gets you know super challenging because I can't cope and it's too hard and Everything is too hard and it's time for a nap. And I'm just using these little leaves, rolling them up so they have a little more texture, a little more of a unique um, look. And then, of course, um, after this, I will need to add some centers to the flowers. So I think I just went with a regular yellow. We'll see it in a minute, though. Oh, yeah, more of those little teeny tiny spirals. Ugh, I feel tired just watching myself do it again. Dude, I had to reposition them so carefully because they just kept wanting to fall off and then get like paint smears on the white flowers. Oh, it was so annoying, but I got it. So that's cool. And it looks really good. Like I said, <laughs> I uh, left it sitting too long. So <laughs> the tip dried shut how it goes man I think I just ended up uh, putting it in a new bag I'm not even sure maybe I got it cleaned up so it worked sometimes I do sometimes I, I figure it out but on these small tips man sometimes they're just 
not the easiest to work with if you're working too slow anyways. Yeah, if you guys have any uh, good ideas for things that you want to see, let me know in the comments. I mean, if, it, if I really don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it. But if it seems interesting and I'm like, hmm, that might be fun. Yeah, you'll probably see a video from me about it. I like doing new stuff all of the time. So, you know. Expect to see lots of new, new stuff from me now and in the future. Ah, that's how I did it. Okay, so I got some yellow, but then I also mixed it in with that kind of chartreuse white leftover paint mix. And this is still using uh, the number 13 Wilton tip. Yeah, I really like this tip because it's really small, but it's like a, a five point star, I guess. So it has a lot of ridges. It's very, very textured. And I like that a lot. Just adds so much dimension to the painting. So I think I put a big dot in the center and then I did um, I think I went around it and I piped small, um, just small dots around the outside. It just pulls it together nicely. I like it. Although, you know what? I think I would have adjusted the colors a little bit. Um... I think I might have made the background a little bit more like make it a darker purple just a smidge not by much just just like you know two shades um, and then I think I wouldn't have used quite so many leaves especially in the center and uh, I think I would have made more of the purple flowers because the white is really dominating um, the, the bouquet. So, and I also would have kept my yellow very yellow because it kind of turned into this shade that looked like uh, egg yolks, you know, when you have boiled eggs. <laughs> and I didn't really like that. And that was because I mixed in a little bit of chartreuse. Um, it is what it is. It still looks really, really good, especially considering it was my first Lysianthus piece. Um, but I always like to look at things and be like, hmm, now how would I do this better next time? You know, but in a loving way, not in a, ugh, I hate this. Oh, I'm so terrible. Nah, I don't, I don't invest in that. Um, so I just like to look at it like, okay, would I like this better if? And then, you know, I just let my mind go wild and the creative process uh, does not disappoint. I just love to be inspired and I love to be in the flow and just have that inspiration just flowing through me. It's just one of my favorite things ever. So I love being a creative person. It is quite fun. <laughs> And it's contemplation time again. <laughs> gotta see it from every angle. Make sure you got all the centers and the flowers. I can't tell you how many times I've missed a random flower like in the middle or something because I just went through and I thought I had done centers for everyone and then there's one weird flower that doesn't have one. So 
you know, now I just double, triple check. <laughs> I've learned about myself. <laughs> and then here I'm just adding a few more of these buds that I made, but I'm not adding the spirals for all of them because I didn't have that many that fit, you know, this size. looking pretty good man I like it okay never mind I guess I thought it still needed some work <laughs> don't listen to me what do I know <laughs> oh yeah I decided to add some more of that yellow um, because it was just kind of empty on the outer edges of the canvas and I like to get a little more, um, maybe spread the bouquet out a little bit more to the edges and some of the places. It just makes it have more of a cascading feel, which I like. It really fills up the space and makes it look very interesting. I think the next time I make one like this, I'm going to move the purple instead of having it in the center of the flower. I'm going to leave it on the outer edges of the flower because Lysianthus actually grow like that. Um, well, there's a variety of them, right? But one of the varieties grows with this beautiful strip of dark purple around the outside edge and it's glorious. And I'm just looking at this going, man, you know what? I really wish, I really wish it would have more purple standing out, you know, because the purple is really muted in this one a lot more than I had intended. Uh, so yeah, I guess I got to make a new one, <laughs> a new and improved version. Yeah, I worked on this details um, portion for a long time. And what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to make this really mm, like a spiraled bud that's just coming out from the middle. I remember I worked on this a long time. I'm not sure if I show you guys all of it, but me and my tweezers, <laughs> We were in there for a while trying to get everything like to stand up straight and not fall on the other flowers and all that stuff. It was pretty time consuming. Yeah, seriously, help me grow this channel, you guys, because the more money I have, the more money I can put into painting supplies. And y'all know I love to paint, and I love to go big, and I love to show you guys a beautiful process. So, share, like, comment, subscribe. You know the deal. You know the deal. <sighs>
I'm just so excited about growing my channel. I'm pretty excited about life in general. So, you yeah, know. <laughs> and now it is time for the grand reveal. Look at that glorious texture. Oh my gosh. I just make beautiful artwork, y'all. Check it out. It's so shiny. It's so gorgeous. I love sculpting with paint. It is the coolest. I love you guys. Goodbye. Have a wonderful day.